Hello everyone, Hyper here, and if you follow me on Twitter or are part of my Discord, you probably know that the guild that I've been raiding with since Tomb of Sargeras has decided to stop raiding. So this kind of prompted me thinking about what to do next, where to go from here, and it also got me reminiscing about my journey as a raider, going from someone who didn't know anything about raiding other than there's bosses and you're supposed to kill them somehow, to being in a top 10 guild um, and achieving the things that I've, I've achieved over the years. So this video will be exactly that, my journey as a raider. This is not going to be a guide or anything like that, however there might be some tips, especially if you're trying to move up in the world of raiding. So my journey begins on a private server, which a lot of you don't know, I used to play on for about 8 years, I started in 2008, um, and I was playing on and off, this was during school, during uh, some high school, it took a longer break through high school and first year of college. Um, but then when I came back to the game, and this was the last year of me playing on a private server, I decided that I should start raiding on this private server. And on this server there were about, you know, three to 4,000 online players at any given time, so it was a fairly well populated server. Think of something like Nostarius. And this journey starts in Cataclysm, during Blackwing Descent, where I joined a casual guild on a private server, um, and we just raided for fun. It was a weekend guild, we raided two days, um, and I just wanted to, to play the game, you know, have fun. I was playing a Holy Paladin at the time. And we got through the raid and uh, progressed. Most of, I were killed normal, progressed most of Heroic, ended up killing all of Heroic. And then by the time Firelands came out, I kind of had this drive in me to keep improving the raid and keep getting better. So by the time Firelands came out on the server, I became the raid leader in this guild. So on Firelands, we killed everything on Heroic except for Ragnaros, um, which we were about to kill as the new raid Dragon Soul was coming out. So we moved on to Dragon Soul, and um, during this time, I was, I was in that phase of my life where I was still very, very young. Um, I was about 19 at the time, I think. And I was the raid leader of this guild, all these people were listening to me, and I thought of myself as the best player in the guild. Not by far, um, by any means necessary or imaginary, but I, was, I consider myself the best player in the guild. And this kind of led me to become a fairly toxic raid leader. So my personality as a raider has changed an insane amount from just a few years ago to now. And if you probably talk to anyone from, from my most recent guild, they will probably not believe this, but I used to be an insanely toxic raid leader. Uh, the type of raid leader who would like yell at people, you know, call people idiots if they messed up over and over, things like that. And I had a particularly bad incident uh, during Dragon Soul when we were progressing the last boss, where it kind of got me thinking of what am I doing? Is is me yelling at these people actually doing anything, or am I just being an asshole here? And after that, I decided that it's time for me to quit the game because I can't really progress any further and go to retail. So I quit this guild. Uh, the guild still exists. Uh, with a bunch of different raiders, but I quit this private server and I went on to playing retail. Now I made a DK here because I didn't want to level from level one. I couldn't be bothered. I've leveled too many characters on this private server and leveling, um, I just hate it even to this day. So I started a DK. Why not start uh, a little bit ahead in levels? I started on a small server. I didn't know what server populations were on live. You know, whenever I joined and I saw that there's like a hundred realms or whatever. I had no idea which one to pick. So I just picked one that was closest to my time zone. And on this server, I leveled the DK and this was during Warlords of Draenor. Um, Hellfire Citadel came out and people were progging it. So I leveled my DK all the way to level hundred and I'm trying to join a guild. I have no prior retail experience. I don't know how people will react when I tell them that, yeah, I raided on a private server. I raided every raid in Cataclysm and, you know, killed most of them on Heroic. Does that even count as experience when it comes to retail? So I didn't know how those skills would translate. 
Um, and I ended up joining the second or third guild on the server, um, as far as rankings go, who was at the time progging Heroic Archimond. And in this guild, um, they kind of gave me a chance. I had very bad gear, but you know, I, I told them I'd earn my spot. Um, I proved myself in Heroic, and then, you know, if they moved on to Mythic or when they moved on to Mythic, if there was a spot for me, good. If not, then oh well. So I joined this guild uh, called Legend, where I had Exile, uh, who was an officer. He was the one who recruited me. There was Death Vale, another officer, um, and Chiru, who was a Mistweaver monk, who was the raid leader. And his main was actually in a top 100 guild. So this was his weekend guild. And again, this guild raided Friday, Saturday. So it's a two night guild. Um, I joined bad gear, no experience that I could speak of um, as far as retail goes, and ended up actually earning my raid spot. Once they geared me up, um, you know, I did good damage. The very first raid that I was in, I was like barely beating the tanks, um, but then they geared me up and I was doing pretty decent damage. So I earned my spot for a mythic raid. And this is a very casual Mythic guild, keep in mind. Uh, we killed Mythic Archimond on the second week of Legion pre-patch. If you don't know this, HFC was out for something ridiculous, like 13 months. So imagine progging for all that time, even though it was only two nights a week. But I killed Mythic Archimond. And when the expansion was over, our raid leader, Chiru, uh, decided that he's going to quit his weekend guild uh, legend and just focus on raiding on his main in the top 100 guild so through the through the progress and through these 13 months i kind of developed and started taking on more uh, more of a leadership position in this guild i started doing callouts on raids uh start to help out with recruitment a little bit things like that and exile um the gm asked me to become the raid leader for the next expansion um, and for the first raid, which was Emerald Nightmare. And I said, okay, look, I've, I've raid led for basically a year on a private server and I'm going to do it in this guild as well. Why not? So once we got to Emerald Nightmare, I was quickly beginning to realize that again, I was becoming the best player in this guild. Um, there were still very good players in this guild. Uh, Death Vale and Exile uh, were both very good, and they both raided fairly high end uh, previously. But I was noticing that you know just because you have a few good players, you also have on the other hand a few players who are not really as the, with the same mindset as you are. And I, I raid led this guild, and in Emerald Nightmare in Legion, we got cutting edge on the very last week of when it was possible, right before they they changed it so you can't get cutting edge anymore. And this was the first time this guild got cutting edge. Um, and during this time, I was recruiting like crazy. It was very hard to recruit on a small server, trying to get players from each guild, poaching players left and right. Uh, you know, just trying to improve this guild as much as I could and trying to push it as far forward as I could. So we got cutting edge and that was a huge goal for me because the guild essentially got cutting edge under my leadership, um, obviously with the, with the help of Exile and Death Veil at the time. And then Nighthold came around. Um, and then Nighthold, I said, this time we will actually be even better. We'll get Realm first and we'll push up our rankings. So in Nighthold, I recruited as much as I could, but in a casual Mythic Guild, you will always have roster issues because people aren't really committed to Mythic raiding. They will have family stuff come up. They will have you know other plans, especially since we are a weekend guild raiding Friday, Saturday. Sometimes people are just like, ah, I'll just I'll just go out instead of instead of going to raid tonight. So we had constant roster issues. Um. And I was recruiting every single day. I was looking through every player on the server. I knew basically all the good players on the server by name. I knew their rank. I knew if I wanted them or not. Uh, I've talked to basically all the good players on the server. And in Nighthold, we got to Croesus. Now up to Croesus, we had a pretty good prog. Um, everything went fairly smoothly. And then on Croesus, we got stuck. Hard stuck. We had a few very good players in the guild, but again, a few 
who just die to beams every time, um, you know, just, just silly mistakes that you expect to see in a casual mythic guild. But for me, that was not enough. Um, I, on Croesus, I was actually tanking, if I remember correctly. So I was raid leading, I was tanking, I was dealing with recruitment, and no matter how much work I put in, I couldn't improve the guild enough to kill this boss. So this is where I decided that I'd pull, put my feelers out and, uh, you know, contact some other guilds, see if they'd be interested in taking me. Now, this was a very, very difficult position to be in um, and difficult decision to make because I've taken over so many responsibilities in this guild that I knew if I left this guild, this guild would die. I was the raid leader. Um, I was the main officer um, dealing with recruitment. You know, I organized basically everything. Um, and I kind of put myself into this position where I took all this res responsibility from the other officers. Um, you know, they, were, they would show up to raid, um, help out if I asked them to, things like that. But I knew that if I leave and go into another guild, this guild would fall apart. Um, and this was mostly coming from other officers as well. When I talked to Exile and Deathville at the time, they said that, you know, if I was to leave, we had this conversation, what would happen to the guild? Would they try to keep it running or would they just call it a day and move on as well? So I knew for sure that if I get into another guild, this, this current guild dies. And having 20 people who you played with for, at this point, over a year and a half, um, who have like come to to rely on you actually just um you know this band was was a very hard position to be in but i said that i if i got into a top 100 guild that is the only way i would leave legend and we were hard stuck on croesus like i said and uh this guild mlfa actually accepted my application and, I, and it, at the time it was like um barely in the top 100 but i said okay i make this change and i left legend and of course the guild died um the players dispersed to different servers different guilds quit the game a lot of players quit the game uh because legend died but it, for me it was time to move on because i was not surrounded by individuals who had the same drive as me um i always wanted to push for more push for more while others just or the majority of the people, and as you expect in a casual mythic guild, just kind of wanted to have fun and, and just raid. So I joined MLFA um, while they were on Star Augur Progress. And this guild already had two Death Knights. Now, in Nighthold, uh, you might remember that Death Knights were very, very strong. And melee DPS in general were very strong. So again, um, I joined with the condition of I need to earn my raid spot. This guild already has two DKs, I'd have to prove myself to earn a spot for Mythic. My first week um, as a trial went very, very bad, because this was the first time I ever server transferred. And if you don't know this, when you server transfer, um, I actually don't know if this still happens, but back then, when you server transferred, your weapon enchant would fall off. So I did my first raid, um, I can't remember if it was the entire raid or just part of the first raid without the weapon enchant. And I was so frustrated. I knew I could do more damage and I, it wasn't happening. I was, I was looking at my damage breakdown, I was looking at everything, um, but my Fallen Crusader enchant wasn't on my weapon. So once I realized that, everything improved. Um, I was starting to beat the other DKs. Um, Luckily, they, they gave me a, a few weeks to prove myself. So second, second raid went, went fairly well. And this was also a big step up in raid time. Um, so I went from a two-day guild to a three-day guild. So raiding from eight hours up to raiding 12 hours. Um, and this guild raided Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, instead of on the weekend. So I proved, proved myself to this guild um, and to the officers, and I ended up earning a spot for Staragur Progress, and I was actually in on the first kill, if I remember correctly. Um, so after, after we kill Staragur, we go on to kill Elison and Gul'dan and get US 88, or something like that. 
And this is around the time where I started to make more and more videos. Um, my channel was, was starting to, to improve a little bit. I started making boss guides or, or DK guides. And this is where I was actually on Final Boss TV. Um, I had like a two hour, two hour little, little show for DKs. And at this time, I thought of myself as a pretty good player. But once we killed Gul'dan, uh, we got US 88, and you know, I looked at my logs and my parses, and I was parsing orange, and I was like, oh my god, I'm peaking as a player. Like, there's, I'm not gonna get better than this. So, long story short, after this, um, we went on to Tomb of Sargeras, where the first three bosses, three or four bosses went fairly well. We were on track for US top 100, and then we got to Mistress Sassin, where the guild sadly fell apart. And again, I was presented with the choice of what do I do now? Now, in this guild, um, I was raiding with Tromic. And Tromic went on to join AK, whereas I, I had my sights on joining a top 50 guild. My only criteria would be that I want to join a guild that has already killed Mistress Sassin, because I can't be bothered to reprogress the boss. So I put out a bunch of applications. I think I put out like four or five applications to top 50 guilds. And I got declined by all of them or I just get it, didn't get a response. And this is when Tromic said that, look, AK is always recruiting. Um, AK at the time was like a top, top 25 guild uh, or top 20 guild, something in that region. And said that they would, they would consider uh, having me join. And again, this guild had another death knight. Um, and this Death Knight had very, very good damage parses. So he had 99% on basically every single boss. At this time, I was, you know, in the 90, 90 to 95% region. So I had orange on mostly everything. I had some purples. So this DK was obviously doing better damage than I was. So it was a little intimidating joining a top 20 guild where I've never been with, where I would have to earn my raid spot over another Death Knight who is doing so much better damage than I am. And I've always thought of myself as a very mechanical player, um, where I do very well in mechanics, and even though I'm not going to be doing the most insane damage most of the time, I will not die to mechanics, and I will do everything correctly. Th this was, this was my, my philosophy at the time. So I joined this guild who was pro progging Fallen Avatar. And on Fallen Avatar, um, I actually saw two Knights of Progress because some people were missing. And Death Knight, again, was pretty good here because you could AMS soak um, some of the, the circles that normally you'd need like rogues for. So I joined Fallen Avatar Progress. I wasn't in on the kill, but then we move on to kill Jaden. And again, here I put in about 600 pulls, um, I think, 500, 600 pulls, something insane like that. I, I don't remember the actual numbers. Um, but then I had to miss one night of progress because of an emergency. And since I missed that one night, they brought in the other DK and they were very, very close to the kill. And that was the night that the boss got nerfed. So then the next day, when again came, came raid time, they said that they're just going to stick with this DK since they had him in post-nerf and he saw more, more progress of the last phase than I did. So he ended up being in on the kill um, and I wasn't. And the guild ended up getting like US 24th, I think. So that was very, very disappointing for me. Um, and it was just kind of an unfortunate circumstance to be in where I had to miss one night of prog, so I missed out on the kill, even though I put in weeks of progress. Um, however, after, after this, this kill, um, the other DK actually either stopped playing, um, or got kicked. I honestly can't remember exactly what happened, but I became the, the sole DK in the guild. And again, have earned my raid spot over the other DK. Now, moving on to Antorus, um, uh, this was really where I started to shine as a player. It was, in TOS initially, it was very intimidating to join a top 20 guild because everyone, I felt like, was so much better than I was. Everyone was doing mechanics correctly. People were getting these rank ones on bosses. Um, 
everything was crazy. I've never gotten a rank one at this point. Um, I thought of myself as a pretty good player, but it was just insane being surrounded by good players. So then we go on to Antorus. And in Taurus, we progress through, through the entire raid, and we end up getting US 12th, which was absolutely insane for me. And after we get US 12th, uh, my guild starts to do speed kills, and I actually get my first rank 1 as a DK, ever. So this was on Hounds, uh, where we did a speed kill strategy where we stacked both bosses on Mythic. And I got rank 1 uh, by a fair margin, and this is really where I started making those Let's Parse videos and showing you guys how to do maximum DPS. Up to this point, I never considered myself as a very high damage player. But here, uh, being surrounded by all these players who were getting rank 1s on you know, multiple fights, every raid night we had a few rank 1s pop up, um, and it was just absolutely nuts being surrounded by that uh, without me having a single rank 1. So once I got my rank 1, which was mostly due to being surrounded by good players, uh, talking with them, improving, seeing their mentality, and just having that general competitive raid environment. So I get my first rank 1, um, and the guild goes on to have rank 1 speed kills on every single fight in Antorus, except for um, whatever the gauntlet boss was, where there were some bugged logs. But without the bug logs, we had rank 1 speed kill on every single fight. So that was Antorus. Um, then new expansion comes out, BFA. I decide to st stick around in this guild um, and going on to Uldir. Frost DK ended up being very, very good. In Uldir, um, I started to understand more how to play my class. I started to become more proficient at everything that I was doing as far as being able to do good damage and doing mechanics very, very well. So in Old Year, a guild goes on to get a top 8, or US 8, um, on Goon. And again, Old Year was um, much an improvement from Antorus for me as a player. Um, even though in Antorus um, I was already doing fairly well in Old Year, there was a definite difference between how I played from the previous expansion and I just kept improving and kept getting better. Now, Old Year was the time where I got the first rank one all-star. Um, and that's just having the highest overall ranking for your spec. And that was absolutely nuts. I didn't even know I got it until someone linked me a screenshot of myself as the rank one DK. So at up to this point, I was never even bothered with All-Star. I didn't think it was possible for me to get a rank 1 All-Star. Um, you know, I, I never even checked it. Uh, but someone sent me the screenshot and was like, oh my god, look at this, you, you have rank 1. And that was absolutely insane. I didn't even think that was possible for me. So then, moving on to Antorus, um, I kind of changed my game philosophy a little bit as far as how I play. Um, and realize that on progress, I will always, always, always focus on getting the kill, no matter what it takes. If it takes me doing, you know, grips on Mechatoric and running bombs, whatever, whatever shitty job that reduces your DPS, I will do it. I don't care about my DPS on, on progress. All I care about is the overall guild ranking. So... That, or not in Antorus, in, in BOD, sorry. So that is very much how I played BOD, and the guild went on to get rank 7 on Jaina. And then I was like, okay, now that I've achieved the guild ranking, it's time to again achieve that personal ranking and start parsing. And uh, in BOD, I got rank 1 on 7 out of the 9 bosses. The only bosses I didn't have rank 1 on were Mechatork, which I had a rank 2 on, and Rastakhan. Every other boss in the raid, I got rank 1 at least once. And again, I had rank 1 all-star um, for both patches, and this is really where I think I've gotten to as a player, um, and really what has defined my game philosophy. Now, of course, along the way, 
going from Emerald Nightmare and Legion all the way to BOD, you can see that I've changed so much as a player. I've went from being a raid leader to, you know, just doing all this crazy stuff to just being able to focus on myself and focus on helping the guild as much as possible. Um, and along the way, obviously, I started my YouTube channel and sharing all of my guides, sharing how to improve with people. And seeing all that feedback has really kept me motivated throughout a lot of these tiers. Because let's be honest, Battle for uh, or BFA has had some points where I was considering quitting the game. And some of the things that kept me going were YouTube we're helping people, other people improve, and also reaching some personal goals that I haven't been able to reach before. So then COS comes out, and this was two weeks ago, or yeah, two weeks ago. Um, the meta completely changes. Melee DPS are not good. Everyone's running full ranged, and um, obviously, I get sat for the first boss, which you know I was completely expecting and I was completely fine with. Um, getting to be in on a two boss two boss raid was I'm not really that interested in that. But then the guild decides to stop raiding, and that is where my raider journey has brought me so far. Now, what will be next from now on? Um, I'm not exactly sure yet, but I will definitely keep you guys updated. Um, I most likely will continue to keep raiding, and if not at such a competitive level as I'm doing now, maybe a little bit uh, less competitive, but I definitely want to keep raiding and keep helping everyone through my YouTube channel and my, my written guides. So that's been my journey, going from someone who has no idea about raiding to a raider who I've, I've, I consider myself a fairly good player. Um, and it's been ex actually insane to reflect on and to think about how I've changed as a person and as a raider over these past few years. Thank you so much, guys, for listening to my story. And I hope that if you're in a mythic guild, in a casual mythic guild, maybe, where you find yourself surrounded by people who don't have the same goals as you, don't share the same goals as you, um... You know, if you find yourself constantly at the top of the damage meter, even though DK is not in the best spot, if you find yourself constantly trying to push for more, don't be afraid to make that leap, um, to join a better guild, to move on, to, to improve as a player and as a person. That is my biggest takeaway from, from this video. Again, thank you so much for watching and listening to my story, and I hope to see you guys on future videos. Bye-bye.